There are certain pieces in your wardrobe that just one won't do. You need at least two or three or even more of them in your wardrobe. And the Juliet wrap dress from my sewing book, you'll be able to sew by the end of this book, has got to be the one. I have made for myself, not just this one, but I have two other versions of the dress using slightly different weights of woven fabric and this one I'm wearing here is such a dreamy beautiful green fabric that I got from the So Haley Jane subscription box. I will share the link in the box below. I would really love for you to follow on the story to see how I went about making for myself not just this one but another one using African wax fabric and Cara fabric. I mean and Cara fabric just has to go with every sewing pattern Yes or no? Well, we'll find out. So, as we always do here on this channel, I'm going to take you along the journey of making my wrap dresses. I'm going to have a few pointers here and there, just in case you want to make one for yourself. And I'll leave the link to purchase any of my sewing books in the description box below. I'll also pin it in the comments section. Enjoy. making this wrap dress and you watch this video please do not cut the front skirts in like on the fold just cut one piece for the left and one piece for the right I have pressed the fabric, I have cut out the sewing patterns, those that need cutting out, the others might need some folding and maneuvering here and there so that I can cut them out properly. And I guess we can start sewing, right? Yeah. Everything's all laid out here on the table. I have, I've cut out some bias, bias tape or bias binding using my fabric. And I've cut out, I, I actually made the ties to be a bit longer just for drama sake just to make it a bit more dramatic it's all threaded now and i have stitched the front bodice to the back bodice but please <laughs> i had to put this in here to say how important it is to stay stitch the neckline especially when you're working with a uh, wrap dress honestly they stretch out and it can be quite frustrating when you do not stay stitched the neckline so please try not to um, skip this step i'm not saying this because um it's part of my book it's just something that i've had to learn the hard way It'll just ruin your garments to be honest anyway here we are we have the bodies stitched together but then this is a bit too wide, like the waistline. So we're gonna gather it in, which is what it says in the book. I am following the instructions. It's a new day, you can definitely tell from where, what I'm wearing. I worked till late last night and um, I could tell that I was getting very tired and it was time to go to bed because my cue was when I... <laughs> okay, it's a new day. I joined two pieces in order to make the, sh the waist ties a lot longer. Well, not a lot longer, but moderately longer and I mean so you know when you join these two pieces together you join them together I didn't even press them so I <laughs> I went on to um, stitch this together to create a tube and guess what if I continued stitching this together I would have had the um, seam on the right side so I needed to unpick so I just um, stopped the whole process, paused and went to bed. So um, I've actually just come back from a few errands and I'm just going to continue with the project. Where's my seam ripper? 
got the seam ripper. Let's unpick. We all have our least favorite things to do in our different hobbies. And I guess <laughs> creating bias tape has to be one of mine. I um, eventually got around to joining up the pieces of the bias tape, got them joined together, pressed them open and moved on. Seeing as this dress hasn't got actual sewing sleeves, the sleeves are grown on, you would have to finish off and stitch the side openings or the side seams so on the right hand side of the dress would be an opening that would allow for you to pass your waist ties so make sure <laughs> you um, leave a gap that would be wide enough for it there are notches marked on the pattern that would show you where exactly the gap should be opened so i had to press open and hold those seam allowances in place so when you have the seam allowances in place you you pin them open and um, sew just to hold the seam allowances in, in place there's a little bit more that's left to be done to finish off the bodice which is to hem the sleeves and get the waistline prepared the reason i like this wrap dress is you've got so much freedom um, with the way that your skirt or the way actually the way that the skirt sits all depends on you now the reason why i say that is you would have to measure up your waistline and ensure that the waistline around the back of the bodice and one of the wrap sides like one side of the front bodice matches up to your waistline after you've created the gathers so you'd have to adjust the gathers to ensure that just one side of the wrap like the front of the wrap and the back bodice fits to your waistline measurements obviously the other one would overlap so it doesn't count does it so yeah so when you have the gathers all evenly distributed you would have to um, ensure that um, the top bodice matches with the um, skirt of your wrap dress If you take a look closely, you'd see that the neckline has the potential of curling up so badly because of the gathers that have happened at the waistline. This part needs to be controlled by you. So first thing, would, first things first, we would um, get the waist ties attached and basted. You can baste it by hand or by machine, um, or you could just pin it in place, but it's best to baste it just to make sure that you do not have too many pins in place. Um, and you'd notice that the top of the waist ties go exactly where the seam allowance is going to be. Getting very close now to the end of the dress. Now, what I've done here is I've started to pin my bias tape from one skirt opening and around the neckline all the way down to the other skirt opening. But you notice that the, the bias tape doesn't match exactly with the neckline. And what, what effect this is going to have is it would hold the neckline in place and ensure that it doesn't curl up. So I am just leaving tiny, just a tiny little bit of a, a gap between um, both edges, just to ensure that um, you don't have any curling effect. So when we get to the sewing machine, we would have to do a bit of maneuvering just to ensure that they are evenly spread out. And notice at the corner, there's a bit of a fold that happens with the bias tape because the edge is at an angle and at the very end of the skirt we chop off a little bit and then fold in the bias tape and now at the sewing machine notice how i am maneuvering to ensure that the excess fabric on the neckline 
e just it kind of sort of eases itself into that um, bias tape. So because the bias tape has a bit of stretch to it, doesn't it? Because it's cut at the bias. But um, this is this this part here is just a skill that is really important for all all, all people who sew. And when you work with bias tape, you don't want the bias tape edge to match exactly with the edge of the neckline. And um, if they match, you would have a bit of a curling effect. Let me know in the comment section how you overcome this um, this part of sewing. Do you gather in? I don't think gathering would be the best thing for the neckline. I think the best thing would just to be, um, take your time. It looks like I'm going really fast, but I'm actually, I was actually going very slowly, but you have to take your time and ease in the neckline to make sure that you do not have any puckers at the neckline. When you're done, you fold over your seam allowance or your bias tape into the seam allowance. If that makes sense. <laughs> you just have to fold it, press and pin just to make sure that the raw edges are hidden away and nowhere to be seen. So at this point, I had to go ahead and stitch the bias tape in place. And after stitching it, as I always do, I find a way to throw in some chaos, don't I? <laughs> well, not chaos, I like, just like twin needle look. Well, I had to stitch an extra um, top stitch. At this point in my sewing journey, I don't think I've ever done any sewing project that has gone exactly to plan. Can you just see how stupid? <laughs> <laughs> I was sewing for so long and I didn't realize that my bobbin thread had finished. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I am done with the green dress. I realized that if I can make one for myself using that green, beautiful linenish kind of fabric, linenish? Anyway, <laughs> using the beautiful green, lush fabric. I can make one using Ankara fabric. So I'm going to make one in Ankara fabric. This fabric here, it's actually giving me winter, autumn winter. So I think it will be perfect for um, transition times from summer to autumn. I can layer it up using like a black turtleneck, ooh, or a mustard turtleneck sweater. Sweater? I'm going to use this fabric. I decided that I am going to include pockets in both sewing patterns. But what I didn't mention earlier on was that I have pocket templates in the book. The pocket templates, um, well, you get four different pockets. However, the closest that you would have to an inseam pocket is not in the book because I already have an inseam pocket like this here it's a free resource that you can get from my website my resource web my free resource website it fits on an a4 sheet of paper so you can just print one for yourself and use it for different projects i don't think it's i, I think every sewing pattern does not have to come with pockets people should have the freedom to put whatever type of pocket they like on whichever sewing pattern it is or whichever garment design it is. So that's that's my thought process. Um, everyone thinks differently, clearly. <laughs> so, um, oh, the, the one that comes in the book looks like this, but this inseam pocket is for like shorts, trousers or skirts, you know? So this would go along the waistline. So it's a different type of inseam pocket, which is the reason why I thought, let's have these templates and then the other ones already on the website. There's no point in duplicating it. So I'm going to go ahead, cut this out. What I think would happen with this next one is I won't cut out um, bias tape using the fabric. I'm just going to use my pre-made black bias tape because I mean, I have a roll of it and I hardly use it. So I think this is my opportunity to make use of what I already have. Then I'll save the actual fabric scraps. But remember, <laughs> you can either use pre-made um, bias tape or you can make your own for the dress. I've got 
come to the point now where um, wearing this dress has finally motivated me to finish making this one so i'm going to jump right into making this finish well finishing off this dress currently i have inserted pockets um to the side seams i have stitched two rows of um you know loose stitches for the gathering and yeah the skirt is more or less ready i have finished the raw edges as well i guess i need to give it a press actually i need to give it a press before i attach the bodice to it but i just want to mention something about this wrap dress the whole idea behind the wrap dress and um the ruching that you get at the waistline depends on how you position your gathers I have gone for the gathers being evenly spread out and you can see how it ruches up here but what I'm going to do with the with the Ankara fabric is I am going to I am going to position the gathers mainly at the you know where you've got the bust and have this bit here a bit flat so it doesn't ruch up here so remember <laughs> you can totally work this the way you want it you want to you can have it evenly spread out you can have the gathers a bit light at this end of the wrap and then a bit more concentrated at this side of the waistline you on a tight spot but please let me know out of the three of them which one do you prefer the most <laughs> it could be just because of the color it could be because of the drape of the fabric or it could just be because of the look of it generally let me know in the comment section below do you like the green one the pink one or the african wax fabric version let me know in the comment section i've got to say even though i had varying time scales in between making the two dresses i just fell in love with making it over again and i think also finishing off this dress and wearing it gave me that extra boost and motivation to finish off my second one i really would love to see your versions of the juliet wrap dress and if if you do make one for yourself please tag me on instagram tiktok facebook wherever you like to share your makes and your creations and i look forward to seeing you in my next creation story enjoy the rest of your day everyone and all the very best take care bye